On this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, it's pumpkin carving time. Uh, it's also time to to get out. Get 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 out. I mean, <laughs> no, that that totally makes sense, especially if you're talking Star Trek Discovery, because I I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I'm going to be asking you some funny questions later. Oh, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 260 for Thursday, the 15th of October, 2020. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. He had a Tom Collins before the show, but it's all Tom Collins' fault, so fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I heard Tom Collins was talking smack, man. You need to go find him. Yeah, and that seems legit. I mean, he seems like the kind of guy that would talk some shit. <laughs> he, he, would, he would gin up some rumors. Some sweet, sweet rumors. Man, I had a I had a strange experience this weekend. Uh, so I'll get to this. I'll, I'll get to the, the pumpkins here in a second because we, we did like a little Halloween kind of mini Halloween party, I guess. Um, but the next day being Monday, I was preparing for work the next day. So I'd only had like, I think two drinks and then I had my laundry in. I, I made sure I set my alarm clock. Like I was going to make sure that, you know, everything was ready for work the next day. Right. And then somebody mentioned how tomorrow being Monday, uh, tomorrow is Columbus day. And I was like, wait, what's that now? <laughs> like as in a federal holiday? Like, uh, yeah, dude. I had my weeks completely off. I thought I thought the federal holiday was next week. Oh. Uh... So I had the surprise of my life that I didn't have to work the next day. So I was like, oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another beer for me. Um, um although I will I will tell you that uh, here on the Indiv- uh, the Ritual Misery podcast we do refer to uh the ho- the ho- October holiday as Indigenous Peoples Day because fuck Columbus. Yeah. Yep. It's yep, not yep, yep. Indigenous Peoples Day. It's Indigenous Peoples Day because fuck Columbus. That's right. That's the entire that, that is the full proper name right. of the holiday. Right. Um but yeah, so Sunday we we had just a little little just a little us, little family um, Halloween party where we we carved pumpkins. Yeah, and um, you can look over my shoulder right here, and you can see the one that I made. Uh, I made him, uh, you, you made you made one in your own likeness. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's a derpy, a derpy pumpkin. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a really good time. Yeah, uh, carving pumpkins and and um, played it played a few games and drank a few drinks and uh, it was a good time. That's cool. We uh, we uh, Amber painted pumpkins with the littles. Uh, last week, um, mm-hmm. but we haven't really done anything with them because there's a rash of pumpkin smashers going through the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just... We're not we're not going to set out any Halloween dr- decorations this year because we don't want to give the false impression that we're having trick or treaters or anything like that. I asked Rick if I can uh, just go in my my daughter's bedroom window that faces the front of the house and shoot candy at kids walking by with a slingshot, and she said <laughs> no. Oh, she said that was inappropriate, and I was like, "Well, they get candy, I get target practice. It's like everybody wins." But she said no. Oh man, see, maybe if you had like a t-shirt gun or something like that. Oh my gosh, and just loaded with candy, it'd be like a, a candy bazooka. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that would be pretty fun. Yeah. What's the what's the splash damage on a candy bazooka? Um. Well, it depends on what kind of candy. I think. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're gonna shoot them out of a Shoot, shoot candy out of a bazooka. It's got to be candy corns, right? Well, okay. So the damage is going to be, I would say it would be similar to a BB gun at that point. That's, oh, whatever. We'll find out. Because <laughs> even if I don't do it, someone will put it on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to blame it on us. Like, oh, Mitchell Misery told me to do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because that's, that's how that works. Uh, yeah. Speaking of YouTube, man, I found a video on YouTube of the commander at the Air Force Academy basically going off on racial and sexual discrimination. Uh, mm. It didn't mention religious discrimination, which I believe, well, I'll get to that in a second. 
but I was watching it and I was like, holy shit, this is actually going on. And then I looked at the date and the date was from 2017. Yep. That was a yep. surprise a, to me. Um, I think I, I think I remember when this happened. Uh, the Air Force Academy is no stranger to controversies. No. And this was the one that happened a few years ago where uh, the Air Force Academy preparatory school um, had an incident of um, several students posting racial slurs and uh, uh, a bunch of other discriminatory discriminatory remarks on their message boards and and things like that. And so, yeah, the commandant is it the commandant or commander. I think it's commandant, right, of the school. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, he's, he's a he's a three star. He's a, he's a three star general. Like it didn't fucking matter what you call him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can call him sir. That's what you call him. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, he gathered everybody, like uh, all the students, all, all the, the faculty, staff. the staff, ev- absolutely everybody together, and and he basically told them, if you can't fucking treat people with respect, then get out. Yeah. Like you're and, not you're not wanted or needed here. Get out. And the reason I mentioned the religious thing is because this was right about the same time that they there was a uh, <clears throat> just down a hill from the main temple because you know, the Air Force Academy has its own temple, uh, uh, church, chapel, whatever you want to call it for whatever faith you're observing in there. It's it's a multi multicultural, multi uh, denominational building. Yeah. Just down the hill from that, behind it was a pagan circle, and right about the time this video came out that had been destroyed mm. some people had gone vandalized it uh tipped over all the stuff you know basically just made it look like a a, a site of a, a tr- like there's just they killed it um mm. i don't know if it's been since rebuilt but that was that kind of struck home with me being a non practicing um uh oh what did I, I i came up with a name for it the other day and i can't remember what it was called uh an atheagan I'm an atheist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 99% atheist, 1% pagan. That, that's, that's where I fall. Um, but uh, yeah, that kind of struck home with me. And then this was about the same time, but he didn't really mention any religious discrimination. Maybe that was because this is before that event happened, or that was just the minor detail on the side note of a bunch of racial and, and sexual discrimination going on. Um but yeah, I, I thought it was pretty interesting, and I was surprised to see that it was when it was. I don't know how it came across my YouTube feed, but it's a good watch, and we'll link it in the show notes. And uh, it it was, yeah, like th- this is this is actual leadership. This is he's not pulling punches. He's not watching his language. You know, he's he's just he he says it how it is, and and it's so true. If you are in a an organization such as the Air Force or you know any military branch where diversity is the primary strength of organizations like that. If you mm-hmm. can't tolerate certain types of people or you can't accept them and be, find them co-equals, you really do not belong. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, other than uh, this podcast where I'm clearly your superior. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it is interesting to note that it, that it was a few years ago. It was 2017. Yeah. Right. And, um, I don't think, okay, so so uh, students at the school probably stopped posting fucked up shit on message boards, um, but I don't think the atmosphere has changed all that much in the last few years. No. Um, the in, in my experience, until the day I retired, it was actually getting worse. Yeah, so the thing that was disheartening to me just fairly recently is that, uh, so General C.Q. Brown, uh, the current chief of staff of the Air Force, uh, he became the the chief of staff of the Air Force like a month ago, month and a half, two months ago, something like that. Okay. Um, and he's the first black Air Force chief of staff. Okay. And um, at the same time, we had the outgoing chief master sergeant in the Air Force. Um, uh, chief Jesus. Yes, yes, enlisted Jesus is what. Uh, <laughs> yeah, enlisted. Yeah, uh, yeah, enlisted Jesus. Yeah, and um, he was also a black. Well, still is. He's still alive. He's, he's he's a black man, right? So we had the he, he retired the, and is no longer black. What the fuck? Right, right. <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> but we simultaneously had uh, the chief of staff of the Air Force and the chief master sergeant of the Air Force, both black men, and uh, you know that's never that's never happened before to have the b- both top leadership positions in a branch of service as being black. So it was a historic thing or a minority at all. Like it, there's always been one of those two was some old white dude. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. So it was a big deal. And uh, the, the chief master sergeant of the Air Force, I'm I'm saying it like that because I cannot remember his name for the life of me. The, so the enlisted Jesus. No, the, oh, the chief. Yeah, Wright. Chief Wright. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So chief Wright, um, he had been in the seat for a couple of years. So he he's he's been around for a bit, but he right. was on his way out. So there was like a, a like a two month crossover or something like that. And now, normally uh, they happen on alternating years. So you get a, a you know, you, you, Secretary of the Air Force stays for for an administration. The chief of staff of the Air Force stays for two years, roughly. And then the, the chief enlisted uh, uh, chief enlisted officer guidance. Uh, chief master sergeant of the Air Force. Yeah, but it's, it's like a, the, the position is different than the rank. Anyway, um, they uh, they they swap out every two years opposite. Uh, right. You know, the chief of staff of the Air Force. Yeah. And that's typically how they do with with any leadership team. So you yeah. got like the the wing commander and the vice wing commander are two years, but they alternate. Yep. Um, but yeah. So uh, during that period where we had uh, both top positions as black men is when kind of like the height of the, uh, you know, the protests and the riots and whatnot of right. late. And there there was a, uh, uh, it's, it's funny because we call him enlisted Jesus because I was about to say, uh, come to Jesus moment <laughs> where chief, where chief Wright, uh, put out a speech that he wrote. It was basically, you know, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror, like yep. speaking to the air force, right. Speaking yep. to the airmen. Um, you probably read this where, where he was like, you know, we, we're not doing this right. Uh, we need to look at. Uh, you know, how difficult it is for black men to, uh, uh, you know, to achieve and to, to, um, what am I trying to say? Um, to achieve the same, uh, to, to reach the same achievements as white men without having like five times the struggles as a white person to get to that point. Right. Uh, I didn't put it obviously as elegantly as the chief did. Um, but he, it was a very strongly worded speech, uh, but I thought it was, was absolutely beautiful and it's something that needed to be said. And where I read the speech was on his Facebook post and the responses, the responses to that Facebook post were very disheartening because there were people that were, you know, staff sergeant, so-and-so master sergeant, so-and-so in their fucking Facebook profile saying like chief you're being divisive by saying things like black lives matter and blah 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 and it's like are you fucking kidding me right now like yeah. uh, yep it was it was ridiculous and disheartening um so i don't think we've gotten very far i'm hoping that um a lot of the things that are happening now like some of the uh things that were initiated by chief Wright that are being continued by uh, General Brown, I'm really hoping that um, the focus groups and things like that are are finding actual, real, like root cause solutions for the airmen, especially like in um, you know, like the Air Force Academy and in basic training and tech school, like the grassroots, like yeah. get them while they're young, you know, get them while they're teenagers, kind of thing, you know, and uh, make yeah. it part of their growing up experience, you know. Yeah, I think. <sighs> I I, th I think a lot of it is just too cultural to go away in a few simple generations, and by generation I mean career level generations of of troops going through. Like it's going to take. I mean, the Air Force is only what seventy years old. It's going to take not even that, is it? Forty, fifty, seventy, seventy. It's um. It's about that, yeah. Because yeah, uh, it's right around when there somewhere. We we celebrated the fiftieth anniversary of the Air Force when we first came in. It yeah. was, uh 97 yeah so it's over 70 years old now yeah, okay so yeah. it's going to take 30 or 40 years before any real change can take place in my opinion it's just too the culture of the military life and it is is just too strong to be overcome in a, a single generation of troop uh i don't know I've, i'm more optimistic than that well um, yeah that's your role in this show <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, just be, just because, like, how quickly, like, female pilots, for example, have been accepted, um, because, like, when we when we first came in the military, it was almost unheard of. 
Uh, but a generation before us, it was like completely no, like that's not yeah. a thing. That's not a thing. That's right. not even a thing. Right. Two generations. Um, now, that's, that's what he just said. Two generations later, now we have women pilots serving in combat. Well, yeah, but we had female <laughs> pilots when we first came. Anyway, yeah. Okay. So, all right. To to go from nothing to completely accepted and nobody bats an eye. Yeah, maybe it is two two generations. But what we need to do is it go from it's completely accepted, nobody bats an eye. It bats an eye to it not happening. We we need the opposite thing going on for exactly for the disparities yep. currently happening to our young troops and and I mean our older ones too. Um, speaking of young versus old, Star Trek Discovery. Did you watch it? I heard you watch it. Yeah, dude, I watched the, I watched the first episode. Um, so I I watched all of Picard. Like mm -hmm. I binged that show. I really really enjoyed it. Yep. So I was like, you know what? Let me check out Discovery. Um, I watched the first episode. Uh, I mean, I'm probably gonna watch episode two to see if it gets better. <laughs> but uh, I didn't really care for it, man. I like, haven't heard good things. There is there's one compelling character. So like yeah. the main character, she's she's a she's the first officer of the ship that she's on. But I believe she's being set up to be, uh, you know, a captain to have her own ship. Right. That's probably going to be like a, you know, end of season one or something. Um, I really like her as a character. Um, but that's about it, man. Like I don't, I just, uh, I hate what they did with the Klingons. Uh, so first of all, this show takes place 10 years prior to the original series, which I thought it was set in the future. Mm. It's actually like a prequel kind of thing, um, which is fine. That was an interesting thing to discover. But then uh, they have Klingons as the the villain, and they don't look anything like a like. When, uh, it took me a long time to even understand that that oh oh that's a Klingon. Like what the fuck. <sighs> That's so my my take on prequels is unless you're Margaret Weiss is probably not going to work out very well. Um, <laughs> right, right. I'm just not a fan of prequels in general. There have been a few that have been done okay, but just in general, not so much. Um, plus, I mean, <sighs> Star Trek is one of those things. Like, I'm barely into Star Trek. I enjoy what I enjoy of it, but anything outside that limited scope is really not my cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm I'm gonna give you a non wreck on the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not enough meat for me to chew on, huh? Yeah. And then, and I don't know if it was just the way that I was watching it or if this was the way that the show was produced. I've seen varying things online, so I don't know definitively. Uh, but the, the Klingons were speaking Klingon, but it wasn't subtitled, which if they were having a conversation with someone like an English speaker, mm -hmm. I could get enough context. Right. But there was like five minute scenes of Klingons talking to each other in Klingon with no subtitles. So I'm just sitting there like, what <laughs> the fuck is even happening right now? That's like, this isn't compelling. So, so Kling non-Klingons talking in Klingon <sighs> or, or un-Klingons. Let's call them un-Klingons. The un-Klingons un were talking in Klingon. Klingon. Let's call them Klingoffs. Okay, the, Kl Klingon. the Klingoffs were speaking Klingon without <laughs> English inter interpolation. So you had yeah. no idea what the fuck was going on. Yeah, it was uh, it was That's an awful. aggravating watch. Like let's let's just say that. If <sighs> you want a better watch than that, you can cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and you can find all kinds of cool shit we have on there. Hell yeah. Get pre shows, post shows, exclusive interviews, um, all kinds of things in the treasure box. And we promise it is a clean golf free zone. It very much is. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about we do? Uh, how about we do one of these, dude? What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's, Ken's game. game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Stephen. Co Stephen Cogswell, and thank you, thank you, Big Voice Jay, for uh, providing that. Um, all right, man. So. We had a lot of fun last week with our our little um, uh, little back and forth, asking each other questions kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I found another one. Uh, this one is simply called "Funny Questions to Ask." Okay, there's seventy of them. So I figured we'd we'd go ahead and do an RNG thing and take turns asking each other okay. these questions. I only read like the first two, and I was like, "Yeah, this sounds good." 
and put it in here. So I don't know if it's going to be quality or not. <laughs> so, uh, so due to time constraints, let's do three each. Okay. All Sounds right. good. All right. Sounds good. I will start because I have no idea what the fuck is even going on. Having looked at the show notes and I got question number 63. Okay. So let's cruise on down here to 63. If you were wrongfully put in an insane asylum, how would you convince them that you're actually sane and not just pretending to be sane? Dude, okay. That's a, man, that's a tough question because an insane person would say that they're sane. But also, but would a, but would a sane person say that they're actually insane? I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, that's tough. I don't know. What what, what do you think? Like, how, how would you get out of that situation? How's the food? How's the food? Yeah. That's what you would ask them? No. Uh, I mean, oh. if, if you had good food, I may not be, be so willing to try to get out. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were like, I got the perfect question to ask them. No. How's the food? Um, have you seen the movie Disturbia? I don't believe With so. Halle Berry? I think it was Halle Berry. I don't think I've seen that. Uh yeah, this this is the the premise of that of that movie, and it doesn't turn out well for anybody. So it, it, there's just, there's no there's no getting out. This is like, um, and I don't necessarily think any of us are overly sane anyway, especially in today's world. So, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, I mean, what what even is sanity? Right. Um. Okay. So I got I got question number nine. Oh, back to the top of the list. All right, um, Amos. What is something that everyone looks stupid doing? <laughs> so many things. Uh, uh, real life sex. Everyone yeah. looks 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 absolutely stupid when they're actually doing real sex. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's I think that's true, dude. Because I, one time I looked over and saw a mirror while I was taking care of business, and I was like, "Oh my god, that does look that does not look anything like a porn." No. <laughs> I would not watch that. No. Like, what? <laughs> no, that's a good answer, man. That's a good answer. Um, I was gonna say something like you know picking your nose or something like that, but that's that's too obvious. Um, uh. I don't know. I would say probably performing any task for the first time. Uh, like if you've never, if you've never um, used a chainsaw before. Oh. Like watching somebody start a chainsaw for the first time. Definitely feels they, stupid. I promise you that. Stupid. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, that's what I'm going to go with. Like performing a task, a, performing a new task. I think that universally makes you look stupid. Okay. Uh, your your last word was stupid. That has six letters. I'm going to click it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I got item number 10. Oh, okay. What is the funniest joke you know by heart? Oh, my God. See, put on the spot. I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of jokes. Um, maybe um, two guys walk into a bar and the third guy ducked. Okay. Okay. I know it's not funny, but it's the only one I can say right now my my favorite i learned when i was in fifth grade and it would take entirely too long to try to do it here and i'd probably fuck it up because it's probably been 20 years since i said it uh but it has to do with uh uh 25 bucks a duck and a fuck um uh, instead i'm gonna go with uh what's orange and rhymes with parrot uh Parrot? A carrot. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, moving on to number 19. <laughs> What's brown and sticky? A, uh, A stick. Please. Oh, okay. All right. We're done with that. Number 19. <laughs> we've got, where is the strangest place you've urinated or defecated? um i mean so many places in south korea yeah i mean yeah i mean we can go with binjo ditch like that's I, not I a would, strange thing Koreans, i would go but... i would go um uh i had to do both at the cargo yard at kunsan 
the night I had and, to, the night I had to sleep uh, uh, over overnight in a 10 k AT forklift because uh, everybody abandoned me and I didn't have a ride back and it would take me too long to walk back and then walk back to the work the next day and wearing Kim gear. So I just stayed there and I had to piss and shit off in a corner somewhere there at the cargo yard. Wow. I, you know, I, I can't remember defecating um, anywhere outside of a toilet. Like I, I mean, obviously I have, right. I mean, I must have, I mean, out, either a diaper or a bathroom. Like I, I must have, but I cannot recall ever doing that. Um, urinating though, like, good Lord, man. I, I pee everywhere. Um, <laughs> He's like pi- I, he's pissing like right I, now. <laughs> yeah, like uh, yeah. No, like I mean, like on the weekends, I probably pee more in my backyard than I do inside in a restroom. Um, That's awful. Benjo ditches in in Korea I already said. Yeah. Um, and if you guys don't know what a benjo ditch is, just look that <laughs> amazing thing up. Um, you don't get the full effect until you see it, though. Until you smell it. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't s- fall one. <laughs> Smell has five letters. I'm going to hit click it five times. One, two, three, four, five. We got number 31. 31 down here. 31 is what would be the absolute worst name you could give your child? Um, anything with. Uh, okay, so to me, I'm, I'm kind of weird. I don't like my name for two reasons. Like, I like the name Kent. I think Kent's fine. Hmm. But. It's upsetting to me that number one, Kent is my middle name. Mm. So all official documents have to have my first name, last name, right? So people mm. don't call me Kent; they call me by, by my first name. So that's aggravating. So I would never name a child a name other than what I intended to fucking call them. <laughs> um, and then also giving the person the name with Junior or the second or the third or something like that is also a curse. So, uh, so no suffixes and no middle names as primaries. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, I draw the line. I would say the worst thing you could name your child is afterbirth. Oh, good can you, God. Can you imagine picking your kid up at school? Are you Timmy's mommy? No. Uh, afterbirth is my son. <laughs> Like you're not even the real child. You're the afterbirth. Yeah, yeah. You're you're just what what fell out after. <laughs> Jesus, that is terrible. All right, what you got, man? What's your next question? All right, man. Um, I believe this will be. Are these the final ones? These are the final yeah. ones, right? Yes. This is your okay. final one. I've already done my final. Okay, so uh, number forty is what I rolled. Okay. What sport would be the funniest to add a mandatory amount of alcohol to? <laughs> NASCAR. <gasps> oh my God, that's a good answer. That is a really good answer. Um, they won't I fucking was... race in the rain. How about they race with some fucking gin and tonic, dude? Okay, the first thing that came to my mind was tennis. I think that would be pretty funny to watch somebody chase a tennis ball and then they just end up on the ground, <laughs> wondering why and how. Um, but also I think, um, fighting like any kind of like boxing or UFC or something like that would be pretty funny if you were trashed because it would be like seeing a bar fight happen yeah. except with skilled people <laughs> <laughs> with deliberately unskilled people. <laughs> <laughs> this fight is pre-skilled. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, all right. awesome. so that was that was fun. Uh, we've got one more topic to hit real quick. Yes. Uh, before we start closing it out. And this is just mandatory because we're the Ritual Misery podcast and we would be remiss if we did not mention the Apple event from this week. Um, Apple, they came out with a HomePod mini. No one cared. They came out with because we, we already have echoes everywhere. And uh, welcome to late to the party. And yep. they came out with uh, the iPhone 12 mini, the 12, the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max. It reverts back to the old style with the camfered edge, not the camfered edges, the uh, the flat edges, the stainless steel mm-hmm. edges. Uh, looks really nice. Looks pre- really pretty. Great new camera system, supposedly. I'll have to see what, what the results are. I'm not pre-ordering. Um, 
Yeah, man. I said a few weeks ago that when the iPhone 12 is announced, doesn't really matter what it is. I'm, I'm, um, I'm ready for an upgrade because it's been three years and I'm just ready. Um, after watching that event, um, I might renege on what I said. Yeah, I think the 12 S uh, is going to be a bomb ass phone. The 12, oh, 12 S yeah. next year. Um, you know, I don't get me wrong. Like the the iPhone 12s nice mm -hmm. uh but the iphone 10 is nice as well right I, like, I've, I I've i've already made my appointment at the apple store to get my uh at battery replaced yeah so i think what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna pre-order uh, i already decided that but i think i'm going to wait for Veri verizon's my carrier mm -hmm. i'm gonna wait for them to come out with a pretty sweet ass upgrade deal mm. where it's basically like a free phone if you you know sign a contract or something. i don't know right. whatever uh, and they give it to me for free, then I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I want to pay 700 to a thousand dollars. They, they do phone. already have a upgrade deal with Verizon. So I don't know if you're going to get much better than that, but mm -hmm. we'll see. I, I'm really interested to see what the reviews are once they're actually in people's hands and they t start taking some pictures, not just Apple engineers out there in ideal fucking conditions in the Grand Canyon. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not I'm not a huge photographer. I really do like taking pictures with my phone, but I'm I'm still impressed with the iPhone 10's camera. Yeah. So uh, you know, LiDAR is a cool technology, but that's only on the the Pro Max. No, just and, the, the Pros. Pro and Pro Max. Are you sure? Because yeah. I thought it was only the Pro Max. No, I'm pretty okay. sure it's on both. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um because the mini and the twelve are basically the same, just different size screen, and then the Pro and the Pro Max are basically the same, just different size screen. Yeah. And, and yeah. battery to fit the screen size, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know, man. It's got, like, it's more um, 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 collision-proof, if you will. Like, it's, it can take more more abuse, more damage. Sure. Um, but no matter what, no matter what, I'm wrapping that new phone in a fucking OtterBox anyway. And with my otter box, I can throw my phone across the fucking yard and hit the fucking brick wall, and my phone's gonna be fine because it's in an otter box. Right. So, okay, cool. You made the phone tougher. Um, it can now withstand deeper depths of water for thirty minutes. Okay. It's good cool. for when you're swimming with your phone. Yeah. Like I. All right. I mean, if I drop my phone in the toilet, well, I'm probably just gonna call that a wash anyway, and just get a new one. Get it, get um, it. Call it a wash. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so like, I don't know, man, uh, uh, it wasn't intriguing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's cool. It's faster. It wasn't worth celebrating, but you know, it is worth celebrating. Um, shoes birthday, shoes birthday. <laughs> yes. Everybody diamond club. If you know snowshoe, um, congratulations. You're in diamond club. Uh, she's amazing. <laughs> if you don't know snowshoe, then, uh, you're you're fucking up your life. Uh, you need you need to get to know no shoe, um, which you can do after this show because we're gonna raid her channel. Um, hopefully she's live. If she's not live now, I'm gonna go live later just so that I can raid her channel because she's definitely <laughs> gonna stream tonight. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Snowshoe. She's been on the show before. Yep. Um, she is a super awesome person. We did a birthday like bomb on her last night. Everybody at midnight Central Time. Um, Anybody that was around, we we all got into her DMs or on her Twitter timeline or wherever we had contact with her, and just like she probably got, I don't even know how many hundreds of of uh, birthday wishes she got, but I'm sure it's a lot, and uh, she deserves all the love. So uh, get into her channel and tell her happy birthday. We're gonna do it in the raid. We're gonna call it the probably the shoe birthday raid. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be great. Hell yeah. Um, hey, dude, uh, speaking of raids, we're about to close this out. People can cruise on over to uh, Twitter to find me at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. They can find you at RM underscore Del Noche on and Twitter. They can find the show at Ritual Misery. And what if they are interested in what you want to drink, what you've been drinking lately? Uh, 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 Everywhere else on the internet, Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven, pretty much everywhere else. There we go, and of course you can follow the or join the conversation at our Discord bit.ly slash rmp discord, and you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at our website and give us feedback at ritual misery 
com. Hell yeah. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thanks we for are... listening. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Thanks for listening. For Amos, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> That's a win. See ya. What a show. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Hell yeah. Good show.